themselves, where are they? Where are they hiding? They were elected in a mandate to stand up for their communities. They said, I won't let you down. Where are they? They're not here. If they are here, step forward. No, they're not here. So our first speaker is James Bundy, a local resident, uh, and I've got to say, uh, he tells me he's the, cha the national chairman of Conservative Future. I was tempted to make him a joke about that. <laughs> it's, it's an unpolitical political uh, So James, you want to say a few words? Thank you for everyone for coming out uh, this morning. I know how much of a hassle it would be to change your plans at such short notice, but this shows how important this issue is to the people of Greystoke and Bowness. I set up this petition in November to keep Bowness Road open, because as a local resident that lives on Bowness Road, I know the impact this road closure had when it was temporary shut for work. If it became permanent, everyone knows the impact this would have. Higher fuel costs, higher public transport costs, impacting the communities between Bayshore and Fimbodes will be shared so much by uh, community spirit with. But now, this issue, we all know the arguments why Bodesh Road should keep open. The argument now is to get our local representatives on site to tell the Scottish Government Minister to call in the Bodesh Road issue. So not a no-faced bureaucrat makes the decision, but the decision is made by in the public and it's a comes to the people of Greenfield and Bonnets. Mm -hmm. I'm delighted to say that as National Chairman of the Conservative Future I can say that the local Conservative Party is on our side and wants the Scottish Government to call in the issue. In uh, Stirling recently a similar issue happened, the Park of Pier development, where the local council, Stirling Council, voted to no development. There was thousands of objections against the development. What did the Scottish Government do? The Scottish Government overruled the local democracy and said that the development should happen in the Park of Fear. The Scottish Government is treating local democracy with contempt. And we are here today to say that they cannot do this to the people of Greenfield and Bonaire. I'm delighted. I'm delighted that I can stand here with members of the Labour Party. This shows that this is not a political issue. This is a cross-party political issue for the communities of Greenfield and Bowness. So please email, send letters to your local representatives, send it to your local MSP, your local MP, and this will get these representatives knowing this is a massive issue for the people of Greenfield and Bowness. So please, Support my petition, send these letters, and this is how we will ensure that our voice is heard and the Scottish Government does not treat us with contempt. Thank you. Thanks very much, James. Our next speaker has travelled all the way from Bonaes. <laughs> I'd like to introduce. Uh, one of Bonnes's local councillors, David Aitchison. David was elected for the first time to Falkirk Council in May and he stood in a pledge to oppose the closure of Bonnes Road. David, would you like to say a few words? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as he says in our manifesto, uh, we said we would fight to keep Bonnets Road open. Um, unfortunately, because I have already made my views clear, I was unable to participate within the um, full council meeting last week. Thankfully, other colleagues supported the issue to keep Bonnets Road open. Looking at the, if the road was to be closed from a Bonnets perspective, it would be greatly inconvenienced for Bonnets residents. Ineos did a travel assessment and they said it would take an extra few minutes to travel the road along and Shire Road and Whole Flats Road. That's perfectly fine at 2 o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon. But if you're going between 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock Monday to Friday, and between half past 4 and 6 o'clock Monday to Friday, 
It's only had 50 to 20 minutes onto your journey. So that's basically a half an hour each day, which amounts to two and a half hours a week that you'd probably be stuck in traffic. It's not acceptable for people to be doing that. And also always already says they're not willing to upgrade the road system, they don't feel it's necessary. Also from ORS, travelling up by public transport, First Bus have says they won't increase fares. Do we trust First Bus? I don't know. Um, they have already said it would take extra time and extra petrol money, so I can imagine in the future they would increase the fares. Taxi journeys from ORS to Grangemouth. There's a lot of elderly people use taxis to shop in Asda from ORS. Taxi drivers will tell me it'll be between two pounds and two pounds fifty extra per journey from one to Gravesmouth. It's really not acceptable for one man to get his mindless wish to close one road. Emergency services coming from Larbor to one or one to Larbor if the roads were busy and there was a blockage or a crash or whatever, they'd either have to go up PL and lift go back to Lith Allen, adding an extra seven, eight miles onto their journey. Um, it would just be totally inappropriate for people's health care. So I just ask everyone here, keep supporting the issue and remain to keep going in short open. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, David. I'm just going to move the speaker out a wee bit. The next speaker is another local resident. John Coombs. John is also a, a councillor on Falkirk Council and she was a candidate at the, the general election. John has been one of the driving forces behind this whole campaign uh, and done a tremendous amount of work. So without further ado, John. Thanks very much. I'm obviously not as professional as the others. I need my, my notes, my little security blanket here. So excuse me for reading off notes. Um, as has already been said, it's not easy to change your daily routine, so thanks to everybody for coming along. We don't have very many demonstrations these days. What we do have is Facebook warriors, so it's nice that people have actually come out um, to show their support. Um, as Ian has said, my name is Joan Coombs. I live in Grangemouth all my life. My dad used to work for the BP. And I know that industry is important to our town. I'm a councillor and I also sit in the planning committee. As a councillor, I understand that there's always a number of opinions and they all need to be listened to. As a member of the planning committee, I understand that evidence also has to be carefully weighed. And I know that choices aren't always easy. However, in this one, the choice was very easy for me. If there's to be any social justice in Scotland, the opinions of the people who live locally must count for more than the convenience of a multinational conglomerate. One that has already been said avoids paying its taxes, but they're happy to take the subsidies from the taxpayer. This company is little, sorry, uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, it annoys me too that, you know, he's living in a big rich yacht without paying back the money that he got from taxpayers in Scotland. Exactly four years ago, he was prepared to walk away from Grangemouth over the pensions of the Ineos staff. The Bowness Road Action Group is a campaign to assert the views of the people of Grangemouth and Bowness and to make sure that the Scottish Government listens to the people and not just the interests of Ineos. I'm not as personal as Ian, I'm calling it a company rather than a man, but I think we all know we're saying the same thing. We've campaigned on your behalf and I'm delighted that Falkirk Council unanimously agreed to object to the principle of the closure of the Bonesh Road. Not just the mitigation, but the principle of it. This wasn't the recommendation that was originally put forward from the officials. But it was your letters, your courage, your commitment and your signatures on a campaign, James, that persuaded the councillors to object to the closure of the road. It was done for many different reasons, but for me the main one was it stated that it would be a, pub a loss of a public right of way and by extending the travel times it would be significantly inconvenient to the people of Grangemouth and Bowness. Ineos claims that the closure is a national development. Now that's absolute rubbish. 
It's only considered a national development because of the way that they drew the boundary around the plan, planning application. This gets a bit technical, but it's the reasons why we have a right to stop this. They extended the line from one end of the Bone Edge Road to the other, and that exceeded two hectares. But it's a technicality, really. Nowhere in the planning framework or on any other planning document did it say that the Bone Edge Road should be closed. Because of your letters, Falkirk Council has told the Scottish Government that there is no planning justification for the closure of the Bone Edge Road. I'm going to repeat that. There is no planning justification for the closure of the Bone Ace Road. It's not just that people don't like it, there is no planning justification. If you've written to the Department of Planning and Environmental Appeals, and hundreds of people did, you will have received a rather long letter asking whether or not you want to opt in, and it mentions a pre-examination meeting. A pre-examination meeting is just a public meeting to discuss the procedures for determining INEOS's appeal. I'm aware that we have had in the past uh, our community council stood up against the biomass proposal and there are thoughts that it's too much of an official, um, it sometimes can be quite difficult dealing with planning authority but at the end of the day they're there supposed to be to support the public. And that's why we're not shying away from this. Brag will be considering how best it can work with the council and with others. But in the meantime, please reply to that letter if you have one, saying that you wish to opt in. You are not committing yourself to anything at all at this stage. No decisions will be taken by the reporter until after the meeting. And there's plenty of time to think between now and then about how we can best represent our case. We don't want any of us to think that we have been covered by the process and that letter would make you feel that way. It's quite a, a very officious letter. Almost frightened the life out of me, but not quite. We don't want any of us to think that we've been covered by this. We should be working in the public interest. Now, I've just got a couple of words to say um, to Angus Donald, uh, MacDonald, our MSP. He seems to have got himself into a bit of a pickle about this planning appeal and he said a number of curious things. He said that he wants the Bone Ash Road closed, provided that Whole Flats is made into a dual carriageway. He said that the reporter can send the decision back to the council. That's absolute nonsense. There is no mechanism for that to happen. He said that he wants to represent those who think that the road should indeed be closed. Uh, last time I looked, I think there was about maybe 10 or maybe 11 of those, and one of them was Ineos. But that's what Angus has said. Finally, he said that the vast majority of people in Bowness and Grangemouth do not care one way or the other. That's not what I'm hearing from people of Grangemouth and Bowness. So that's what Angus has said. Well, this is what I say back. Angus, you are our representative at Holyrood, and we want you to represent us. We want you to stand up to Ineos. We don't want you to roll over and ask for your tummy to be tickled. Get on to the planning minister and get him to call in the appeal so that there is real accountability and force Ineos to justify their proposals at a full public inquiry. We don't want a faceless bureaucrat to make this decision. That's not democracy. James has already mentioned it. The planning minister decided a few weeks ago to call in an application at Dunblane for about 19 houses 19 houses is not of national importance. And why did he call it in? Could it be because the applicant was Andy Murray's mum? Frankly, the closure of Bone S Road will affect far more people than those houses will ever do. You'll be glad to hear, finally, my final point. I believe that we can make a difference if we act together. So please support Bragg, please follow us on Facebook, please find the sheets that we have here so that you can be kept informed of progress. And you'll know then when the pre-examination meeting is being held. And please do then turn up for it. Thank you very much for your support. Thanks very much, Joan. And there you have the case for keeping the bone air road open. The Joan mentioned one of our local representatives. His office is over in that corner. So on Monday morning, if any of you feel like storming his office, you're very welcome to. You've got to ask, 
Why is he not here? He doesn't stay in Grangewood, by the way. Maybe some of you think he does, but he doesn't stay in Grangewood. He was lucky enough to get a brand new council house in Falkirk. Not only that, he's got a holiday home in a wee island off the west coast of Scotland. So when he's not here, that's where he is. He's not standing up for you, the people who maybe elected him. He's in his holiday home in the west coast of Scotland. Now, unlike Mr MacDonald, we at one time had two real champions that stood up and fought for the interests of the people of Grangemouth. I'm delighted that they're both here today. Michael Connerty, who was MP, and a well-known well face in Grangemouth. And Kathy Beatty, who was the MSP, and unfortunately lost her seat to a man who was a waste of space, a complete and utter disgrace. Now, Michael Connerty, when the workers down the road at Ineos were involved in an industrial struggle three years ago, he stood shoulder to shoulder with these workers, as did Cathy. That's the type of people who want to stand up and represent us at Holyrood and Westminster. Not faceless people who were never seen. And against the great pleasure, we asked Michael to step forward to say a few words. And I mean a few words, because those of you who know Michael know that he likes to have his say. So Michael, it gives me great pleasure to ask you to come forward and address the crowd. You say the good to a bit of a non-political meeting, eh? I come down to, to speak on behalf of part of the memory of Harry Ewan, because Harry Ewan was the Member of Parliament here at Stirling Falk at Greensworth, and I lived in Stirling. And I was the secretary of the constituency Labour Party. One of the topics that Harry used to talk about was an attempt by BP to close the Bowness Road. Now you're talking here about 30 odd years ago. And he told them quite clearly, and they had with some toe to toe meetings with them. And they could not justify their application. So they backed down. But we're dealing with a different kettle of fish here. I said when I retired, well, when they made me retire from Parliament. <laughs> That, as far as I'm concerned, the problem's not in the parties, it's in the system. And the system is such that a guy like that owns Ineos, who lives in Switzerland, who's got three billion pounds of personal wealth, doesn't give a toss where he makes his money and what damage he causes in doing so. Quite simply, I mean, he's going to frack all over Yorkshire and he makes his way all over Scotland. He's bought up most of the companies that are doing that, despite the fact that people have said no frack. He's also quite clearly determined that he's going to decide through the back door in cahoots with some face of official, as Ian has said, if he gets his way, that he's going to close a road that will isolate Grangemouth in a way that people don't think understand. We talk about people coming from Bones to here when Harry was here, it was not part of the constituency originally. Bones was in West Lothian. But there was still the same problem. That if you cut off the, the, the road, even with the new road that's been built, it would mean people would make a simple choice. You drive along the road, coming from Bones, you're going to turn right, come all the way back up to go to Asda, no you're not. You're going to just keep going and end up in Falkirk at the, at the, the shopping there. It'll isolate the way I think that will have a fantastic, fantastically important impact. It's already, as we see with the closed shops here, small towns are struggling. And having Asda, whether you're on the side of Asda or not, or something built right in the centre of town, as it is an important draw for people in the town. But it's about taking on Ineos, who are a very powerful organisation. We'll have lawyers that, you know, better than that the council have. You've heard from John how meticulous the council has been in its attempt to say this is not any justified planning decision. But it's going to be more about more than that. I read, uh, or I heard from somebody who read Alex Salmon's book, that he claimed he saved Ineos. For the people of Scotland, it's actually John Swinney that actually with the motion with the was at the meeting, not never saw him. But clearly they think they've got an end to the Scottish government. Just the same way as the, the people who did the thing at here in the Bridge of Allen, which will completely uh, blot out the, the green belt between Bridge of Allen and Complain because of Andy Murray's mother having some influence there as a public figure. So I think you've got to step up this campaign, you've got to leave Jane for starting it. But you've got to get onto their doorstep. 
We don't want people to see us out there in front of Ineos pointing a finger at them. So you have to take this campaign out of the town and down to Ineos. You have to bring the people from, from Bones, the people from Grainsworth, and others who will support you because it's about a town being attacked by a major multinational company who's only interested in the bottom line and the profit. It's not about the people. Don't get on that they care about the workers that work there. You know about somebody here who formerly is going to go back and tell the management what we're saying. The fact is, as long as they're making money, they don't care who they stand on, whose lives they destroy, and what they do to communities round about them. It's all about that money flowing back to Switzerland. It doesn't pay very much taxes, by the way. But it doesn't much of it going back to the people of Britain. So I congratulate those who are in the campaign. And even surprised to see me, I actually cut a two-week holiday short, deliberately, to be back for this meeting, this non-political, non-party meeting, <laughs> on behalf of the community. I'll be, I'll be there all the way with you, because it's not about, I don't want to be re-elected, I'm enjoying my retirement by the way, um, but I want to see people being treated fairly. They were treated fairly when Harry fought for them. I think we also talked out the same issue with BP when they had the explosions, remember one of the pipe burst across the road, we wanted to close the road then as well, and we persuaded them not to do it at that time. But this is a different kettle of fish, and I think you're right, it's got to be opened up to a public debate. Now why they got to go, I know they're a technicality, why they got to go directly to the Scottish Government was probably because of all the elections going on and somebody up in Falkirk and the council not spotting were trying to put the planning application in. But the time ran out and then they went straight to the Scottish Government without it being dealt with at a local level. But they're like, swimming upstream now, but they are with us. All of the council, all of the parties. And now we need all of the people. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Michael. It's great to see you back in the arena. You've been sadly missed. I just want to make it clear, there have been a number of wee jokes made here about it being non-political or all party. And it is. Pride is completely non-political and all party. We've got speakers here from the Labour Party, from the Conservative Party. Another party was invited. The MSP and the, MA, the FP were invited to come along this morning, but they chose not to. Well, that, that tells you something. Our last, our last speaker this morning, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce an old friend of mine. I've known Richard Leonard for many, many years. Uh, and those of you who keep your eye to the news will know that Richard, Richard Leonard is one of the leading contenders to be the next leader of the Scottish Labour Party. And there's every possibility that the man here is going to address you in a few minutes will be the next First Minister of Scotland. So that's it. We want to stay forward and address the rally this morning. And I've got to say, folks, <laughs> I've got to say, folks, it's great to see the turnout this morning. It's always a worry when you're organising something that's going to be a bit of a flop. But the turnout this morning is really fantastic. And I think I'll show those in power, the people of Grainsworth, Bones, and the surrounding communities are standing up for their rights to keep Bones Road open. Richard. Ian, thanks very much indeed. I'm absolutely delighted to be here this morning um, as a Central Scotland uh, Labour member of the Scottish Parliament. And therefore, happy to uh, bring you solidarity and greetings from the Scottish Labour Party. You know, there are some people uh, in recent years who have been denigrating protest as part of the political process. If it wasn't for protest, people wouldn't have gained the right to vote. If it wasn't for protest, we wouldn't have a right for free trade unions to exist. If it wasn't for protest, we would never have built the welfare state and the National Health Service. If it wasn't for protest, we wouldn't have a right to work. So I'm proud to stand here this morning as part of a protest movement. The second thing I want to say is this. A couple of people have said it's not a political event. This campaign is highly political. It's not about the politics of labour, the politics of nationalism, the politics of conservatism but it is about the politics of democracy. When it comes down to it, 
when it comes down to it, it's about who runs this town. Do any of us run this town? Or do the people and their elected representatives run this town? One of the things I've been speaking about in the last couple of weeks are a couple of ideas. One is that I think, and I'm glad that the Labour Party once again is looking at, what we can do to extend public ownership. And one of the areas I think we should be extending public ownership is to the 40s pipeline system, which any of us have got their eyes on. The other thing which I've been speaking about is this, and it's not an abstract concept, Here's a real example we're in the middle of here. Because I've been calling for a redistribution not just of wealth, but of power. From the few to the many. And I can't think of a better place to start than redistributing power from Jim Ratcliffe and handing it back to the community of Grangemouth and Bonest here. In the end, campaigns like this are about two sides of a fight. On the one side is organised money, and for the rest of us, on the other side, all we've got is organising people. But today is about organising people, standing firm. If we stand firm and fight this, we can defeat it, because democracy is on our side, right is on our side, and if we can show that the people are on our side, elected politicians of whatever their stripe will have to sit up and take notice. Politicians respond to pressure. So keep up the fight, keep the faith, you are right, and we will support you every single step of the way. Thanks for coming this morning. Thanks very much, Richard. I'm sure you all agree that it's a truly inspirational address this morning from the man who I say and Mark my words when it was said Saturday, 23rd of September, <laughs> 20 minutes to 12, the next First Minister of Scotland. And you can say that you heard them speaking in York Square at Greenhouse. So what, one of the actions that Richard's also taken is written to the Minister for Local Government and Housing, who has the overall say in this decision. Uh, and there's a copy of his letter if anybody wants to take it away and have a read. Now, the other thing, that's the last speaker this morning. But we'll have some delightful cupcakes here this morning. <laughs>